free national movement re-elected Dr. Hubert Minnis as their leader. The week is railroaded by crime and a local Haitian behaving group rejects calls from a Haitian-born U.S. representative to boycott the Bahamas. We've got these stories and a whole lot more. I'm your host, Krishna Virgil, and this is The Tribune's Top 5. Despite calls from a U.S. representative to boycott the country, a local Haitian behavior group distanced themselves from that potentially damaging campaign. The United Association of Haitians and Bahamians publicly denounced and branded the comments of a Florida politician and a Haitian Bahamian activist as vicious and unfair. The group said U.S. Representative Daphne Campbell and Jetta Baptiste, president of the Haitian Bahamian Society in the Bahamas, were misinformed and could not speak for those at the center of the government's new immigration policies. On the day the changes came into effect on November 1, there was a mass roundup of illegal immigrants, mostly Haitian, in New Providence. However, Administrative Assistant of the UAHB, Robertson J. Donay, told reporters that the group was greatly concerned about the damaging remarks, adding that neither of the women consulted with the association before making public statements. The UAHB said they did not need anyone to speak for them because they were not voiceless. Web shops that are not granted licenses to operate will have seven days to shut down once notices of closure are released, Tourism Minister Obi Wilshkam announced in the House of Assembly on Wednesday. During the House session, Mr. Wilshkam hailed the imminent enactment of legislation associated with the new gaming regime. With the gaming acts coming into force on Monday, Mr. Wilshkam struck a firm tone, stressing that if web shops intended to remain open during the transitional period, tax arrears must be paid for the period July 1 to November 24, 2014, no later than December 1. He said, quote, any failure by a web shop proprietor to pay these back taxes timely and in full will be grounds for the disqualification of such a business for licensing, as well as the disqualification of the owner thereof from participating in a licensed bid." End quote. He added that web shop owners are required to make full and frank disclosure of revenues generated by past business operations by December 1. Failure to do so will result in them being disqualified from obtaining gaming house operator licenses, Mr. Wolfgang said. While Bahamas police force officials had their hands tied this week as three men were killed in three separate incidents. Police were also involved in a high-speed shootout and chase with two teenage boys. Three separate shootings earlier in the week resulted in the murders of three men in less than 12 hours pushing the country's murder toll for the year to 106. Police on Tuesday said they were also investigating two other shooting incidents that left three other men in hospital. On Tuesday morning, police said they were called to Inagua Way in the Kamaika Road area after gunshots were reportedly heard. When officers arrived on the scene, they discovered the body of a man lying in front of a residence on the side of the street. Later that same day at around 1 p.m. on Tuesday, police said they were on the scene of a drive-by shooting off of Fox Hill Road. They said the man was found lying outside of a residence off of Joe Farrington Road with multiple gunshot wounds in his body. He was rushed to hospital by ambulance but died of his injuries later. Then at around 7 p.m. on Monday, police were called to the scene of another homicide off of Cowpen Road. They said the victim, 48-year-old Holland Kevin Major Sr., was unloading Christmas packages from his vehicle when he was shot multiple times. He died on the scene. Tuesday night also saw a high-speed car chase that resulted in a shootout involving the police and two teenage suspected armed robbers. The teens were detained in hospital following the incident. Prime Minister Perry Christie admitted on Monday that he was worried about the firestorm of international criticism his administration has been receiving over its new immigration restrictions. Mr. Christie suggested that the government would start damage control when Foreign Affairs and Immigration Minister Fred Mitchell visited Washington, D.C. next week to explain the new changes that took effect on November 1. His comments came the same day that Amnesty International, a global human rights watchdog group, expressed concern about the impact the changes will have on immigrants and their children, particularly those of Haitian origin. Mr. Christie told reporters he stood behind the policy changes that were implemented to tackle illegal migration. 
Mr. Mitchell later told the Tribune that he would meet with the Secretary General of the Organization of American States and the CARICOM caucus. This comes in the wake of the OAS's Secretary General's interview with the Jamaican Observer on Thursday, in which he reportedly expressed concern about the rounding up of illegal immigrants in the country. However, Mr. Mitchell said he was not concerned in the slightest about the comments. The Free National Movement re-elects Dr. Hubert Minnis as their leader. Newly re-elected Free National Movement leader Dr. Hubert Minnis was ushered into the Holy Trinity Convention Center yesterday to boisterous applause after defeating Long Island MP Loretta Butler-Turner in a much-anticipated leadership race. Despite launching his campaign this week, East Grand Bahama MP Peter Trinquest defeated Darren Cash and Dwayne Sands to become the party's new deputy leader, replacing Mrs. Butler-Turner. Senator Michael Pintar defeated former state minister for the environment Fenton Nemour to become the party's new chairman replacing Mr. Cash. Friends of Roll and Francis Sawyer were made deputy chairman of the party. Dr. Minnis said, quote, the victory train has left the station. I tell Christie Government House, here we come, end quote. Dr. Minnis sought to portray his party as one that is now stronger, ready to refocus his attention on holding Christie administration accountable now that it has dealt with the issue of leadership in a year where rumors of a rift between himself and Mrs. Butler-Turner have attracted numerous headlines. Ten minutes into his speech, Dr. Minnis acknowledged Mrs. Butler-Turner, who then made her entrance into the Hall of the Trinity Convention Center to the rousing applause of party faithfuls and the song, I'm Every Woman. He said, quote, you are formidable and like your grandfather, fearless, end quote. Want to get in on the discussion? Well, here's who you can. Just log on to our website at www.tribune242.com. Like us on Facebook, the Tribune News Network. Send us a tweet at Tribune242 or subscribe to our YouTube page, Tribune242.